All right, so a long time ago on this channel, I started um, a robot project, but I never actually got the hardware uh, in. And then I started moving around a lot and um, it never really got to uh, fruition. And I wanted to make a robot that could interact with my dog as sort of like a friend. Mostly because I find it interesting. I like working on robotic uh, projects and electronics. And um, because at that time I wasn't working from home a lot. So um, I was hoping that it could help my dog feel less stressed about being home alone. However, given recent events, I'm working from home now. So this is less of an issue. Uh, now, this is uh, kind of the setup. Uh, it's kind of more in a mock-up state right now of uh, what we're gonna try to get to work in this video. Uh, it has worked before, so there's a little uh, pan tilt janky setup with just super glued uh, servo motors here. Uh, there's a little output module that has seven segment LED display where uh, these segments are all broken. I guess I burned them. Uh, three little status LED uh, LEDs, sorry and a uh, dual channel uh, buzzer setup so we can have two different tones at the same time. This will be the simplest layer of output for our robot. Uh, then over here we have a, a motor controller. Um, so this is a shield that sits inside of an Arduino uh, Uno and uh, that hangs uh, at the moment tethered on a 12 volt power supply that will be driving uh, the motors inside of this thing and also um, not this module is actually um, driven by something else uh, I will explain later uh, so okay then we've uh, done the camera bit so we can actually disassemble that for a second and get this servo off this one is super glued like I said because at the time that I was making this I didn't have any other way of setting this up. Now this is an interesting component. Uh, let's talk about this thing first because I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, this is a Udo Bolt gear. Um, first of all, I will tell you, I wish I could open it up and technically I can, but in my infinite wisdom, I super glued uh, this little USB uh, hub to it, which is uh, stuck in the USB-C board over here. I got another one of that to HDMI while we're here. Ethernet. Um, so yeah, uh, that actually kind of glued the chassis to the uh, inner frame work. So at the moment I'm not willing to open it up. Like uh, at one point I will just break this off and do it again. But uh, what's inside of here is a tiny, tiny uh, little square motherboard with an uh, AMD Ryzen on top of that. Uh, quad core with 8 threads. There's 16 gigs of dual channel laptop RAM in there, which you can also change for 32 gigs if you wanted to. There's a little uh, NVMe uh, hard drive in there, only 128 gigs because I was trying to keep the costs down a little. The base thing, this thing is actually quite cheap, but once you set it all up, still gets to be about eight nine hundred dollars Um... Yeah, so that's uh, the CPU and uh, RAM config. Then it has a, a Vega 8 GPU on it, which uh, helps with graphics. It doesn't help with any kind of AI related task, because obviously this will be the brain of the robot versus what a lot of people will do uh, with a Raspberry Pi, for instance, or an Odroid, or maybe a Jetson, uh, Nvidia Jetson. So uh, I've chosen to uh, use this as my uh, brain uh, which is cool because uh, not only does it give me uh, a non-ARM uh, architecture to work with, uh, which is nice, it uh, gives me a lot more power than any of those other boards. Um, and then uh, it also actually fits exactly, for some reason, these two holes here in the back and the, the holes inside of this thing, they line up perfectly. So actually, it'll only take two screws to mount this I don't even have to do much of the work now finally let's just turn this over real quick and then we can get started uh, might as well uh, this will be chaotic because I don't know how to structure things 
So here we just have uh, four beefy motors, 12 volts each. Um, that's it. Uh, each one of them has a positive and negative wire on it. Uh, very simply, you just solder them on. Uh, keep it somewhat uh, sane, but in the end you do whatever you want. Um, so yeah, basically the way that this kind of starts, I think best thing to do is just hook up the motor controller first. Uh, so let me see if we do that on top of here maybe, then uh, that should be relatively easy. So take your motor controller. So this is a um, DF robot quad motor driver shield for Arduino. Um, this is basically a very standard motor driver board. Do need one that can drive four motors. Um, probably like somebody let me know, but it's probably possible actually to um, uh, drive four motors with only two uh, motor, motor outputs because uh, I really don't need these and these to ever drive in different directions, I think. Uh, not even for turning, so... Um, yeah, unfortunately I didn't structure my cable, so... Um, I don't know which motor is which anymore. Uh, let's just like untangle this a little bit, like that. So then we have one motor over here, and that's... You see, that's front right, so let's call that uh, motor 2. Well, you can debate about that. So th the question is how do you want to set it up to drive it later in code, right? Um, you can say uh, the front left and the front right motor are motor 1 and 2, um, and the other two are the others. That means that when you're writing your code to turn, you would have to say like, okay, I want to turn motor 1 and motor 3 this way, and motor 2 and motor 4 the other way, right? Um, I do think I'm saying that correctly, yes. So that's kind of how I set it up previously, and that felt fine. Like, However, you can also say like, I just want to say, Motor 1 and motor 2 is left turn, motor 3, motor 4 is right turn. I'm going to go with my initial uh, instinct because uh, I also already wrote the code for it, which is already on this little thing. I didn't tell you, by the way, this is so cool. Um, not only is this a 64-bit uh, AMD Ryzen architecture, um, it also has a built-in uh, GPIO array right here, just like the Raspberry Pi has, the bottom uh, pins. But the top pins, the top one over here, that's actually a built-in Arduino Leonardo. So that means over an internal USB port, I already have an entire Arduino built into my brain, into my computer. I find it so cool that I'm using this as my main computer now. I, I, I walked away from the Mac because Obviously, the keyboard is dying, so this is now my actual main uh, development machine, even because I, I actually work uh, with Arduino related stuff sometimes. So uh, it's perfect. Like, I have a built in Arduino in my Mac, I, uh, in my computer. I don't even have to connect um, uh, something like uh, an Uno to my uh, computer, it's already built in. The reason I'm still using this is because I want to free this built-in one up for sensor input and uh, that kind of stuff. While this can just drive the motors and be a dumb driver. Because it can still plug into the USB port on this. Now I have two Arduinos, um, which is cool. So what am I doing here? Oh yeah, we were doing the motor. So take your motor controller, then take the front left wheel and a uh, screwdriver and then these will be marked motor 1, motor 2, motor 3, motor 4 so um, the black one goes to minus so now my front left wheel will be motor uh, 1 <clears throat> sorry 
this is something you need to keep in mind for once we start writing the code, uh, which I've already done, so I'll just walk you through it. Uh, so we know how to address the motors individually and make them drive. You'll be able to assign a direction and a speed to them. So that means forwards, backwards at a given speed. So this is just very simple actually. I remember the first time I did that. this, it took me a long time to figure out how to wire up motors to a motor controller and it's actually relatively simple. Uh, now I'm just thinking in mirror, so the right left one, no, <laughs> come on, uh, the back left uh, motor will be motor 3. Why is it that when I'm doing something I have no space in my mind to actually narrate what I'm doing correctly and I will say things like the right left one which makes no sense. Alrighty, so that's uh, that. My quality control is also not great at the moment, so it's, it's very possible that uh, I'm making mistakes here, but we'll see. Let's just hope that it will go fine. Because I actually kind of hate editing, so I might even just leave the mistakes in, you know, out of laziness and such. All right, that's just about all you need to do to wire up these motors. Uh, this will allow to drive. We, we, we now basically we're driving. Um, and, 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 I, and I'm making a mess as well. So let's just, uh, let's, let's mount this thing to the body and uh, maybe we'll just like do the driving now. And then, I mean, I probably could hook up the um, the camera as well. You know what? Let's just let's just continue and not overthink things, because things start going wrong when I start thinking. All right. So now we need one of these uh, screws. Let's see. I'm also at the moment still working with a severe lack of proper tooling so um, I actually don't have like any kind of normal screwdriver that can do this task correctly so last time I did it with a little yeah. hold on for a sec I'll be back and there we are so. I took the screw like this and then sort of lined it up like that. Okay, cool. This is kind of finicky. Um, and in fact, like when, when this becomes a bit better, I think I will uh, get a 3D printer and uh, reprint myself an entire new body. Uh, keep the motors, obviously keep all this kind of hardware throw away the entire robot body and uh, print something that is a little bit more customized to uh, this because and maybe I won't even print it maybe I'll just forge it in metal or something like I'd have to learn a little bit more on how to do something like that but I'd, I'd like that actually because um, Again, this has to be a dog resistant robot in the end. Uh, Boogie has to definitely be able to play with this. He has to be able to attack it because he will. And um, it also has to be somewhat friendly towards him. Like, as in, um, you know, not a lot of sharp edges. And, you know, maybe I can do something about muting the. Uh, the wheel noise or something you know what I mean like because that kind of freaks him out even though like he definitely would get over that 
uh, once he once he gets to know this object a bit better, then yeah, uh, that one was not entirely not correct. Oh shit, I forgot something. Um, I forgot to put it in li these little washers, uh, so <laughs> I can actually just pick the thing off right now. But uh, consider this um, tight for now. It's fine. Um, you know what? Let's let's start booting this thing up, um, and then I'll I'll grab a screen share on this machine or something, so so that we can um, look at some of the software, and possibly make it work. I I, I still have to get something because this doesn't have a plug in it right now, and I don't think I have anything laying around here. This is not correct, right? It is. All right, so problem solved. This is now powered. Um, it still needs to go to an Arduino, obviously, right here. So this, uh, you're familiar with Arduino shields, right? Like, they just sort of plug right in there. They take up a few pins normally. So you'd have to read up on which pins you are no longer allowed to use on, uh, on this. Now we need a um, link to here. I can actually use uh, this cable. All right. I mean, now we're just back in Arduino world, right? Like we just connect this to uh, any kind of port. I will choose one of the non-powered uh, hub ones because I don't need power from this I think and then uh, let's attach a keyboard right here and a mouse ah, on the hub on the hub on the hub so here we are um, a keyboard mouse the Arduino uh, we need power which comes from here so um, I will have to turn it around because my power cable is too short. Always infinitely prepared. Um, I think that's it. So we just say, let's power it on. Let's grab our mouse. Uh, it's booting up now. So once it's there in the operating system, I will throw up a screen share. All right, so let's start Arduino software. Uh, the board is li uh, li uh, lit up, so that means that um, we are connected. Uh, I need to open something recent, which is the uh, Uno code. Here we go. So we include servo.h. Um, believe that's built in. Uh, actually, we do not need that right now. Let me, can I easily comment code in this editor? This editor is not the greatest, but control slash. Okay, perfect. So let's edit out what we don't need right now. Um, and then uh, sort of uh, bring everything back in that we do need. Uh, we don't need any of this right now. Uh, so, I see, okay. Um, we have the locomotion code right here. This is the actual code, right? So let's actually just grab this and uh, make a new file. So we don't have to uh, mess around. Uh, save changes, no. Okay, so. 
we start with uh, defining uh, some constants. Uh, and these are just for the uh, motor speed uh, uh, ports. So, I mean, the comments kind of uh, give it away, obviously. So, um, we can uh, do that. And then, uh, obviously, we need our um, void setup method, for which we do or don't have to do anything. Um, I don't think we have to do anything in setup. So, we can go directly to uh, void loop. And uh, in here, what we can do is, uh, for instance, uh, let's just say like, okay, uh, advance, um, I don't know, wait, um, maybe with 10 or something. I can't remember what the speeds are. So let's uh, delay for uh, 10 milliseconds and then say uh, stop all. Let's just see if that works, and if that works, then we'll uh, run through it. Uh, test this. Yes. Uh, so, you go to your tools, you make sure that your board is correct, and in this case we're targeting the UNO, and you make sure that your port is correct, uh, and in this case again we're targeting the UNO. So let's just check our code real quick. It's done compiling, let's upload it. It's done uploading. I do not see any movement. Why is that? Let's debug this problem. Um, we have power. Maybe I just didn't give it enough uh, juice or something. Like let's let's do a hundred and let's wait a uh, hundred milliseconds and let's try it again. All right, I'm obviously doing something wrong. Um, I did see that I saw a uh, test motor script. Let me just have a look at that. That does seem to do pretty much the same stuff. So, all right, this could work. Let me start breaking out what I don't need. Okay, I want to have these methods. Uh, I do not need... Do I need this? I do, don't I? These are the... I didn't set the motor pins. That's why it didn't work. Um, you can delay two seconds, I don't care. And then we don't have to read from serial in this case. That was uh, to actually uh, communicate with Python. So what would I do? Um, here I will actually do the same thing again, so um, advance, maybe 10, I think 10 is fine, um, delay, well, let's, let's delay 50, and then uh, stop all, yeah, because I, I, I do believe that this was the pin, so from 11, yeah, this for loop is me setting the pins uh, correct for that, so that was important. Uh, and now I have some camera servo code that we will have a look at later, because this is getting like out of hand with time. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's this very whiny sound uh, that's that's a good thing I do I do think it's kind of weird though that it, it's it isn't stopping it should stop oh but <laughs> uh, it won't stop like this will it like let's do it over here for a second and let's actually give it uh, some actual power because this is just not enough power. That's why it's whining and not doing anything. You saw that move, right? So basically if we delayed it for, I don't know, 150, it will actually drive forward a little. And now if we, if we were to um, do something like uh, 
turn left maybe. And then we can actually do that for, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe 300 so that we can actually see. Uh, turn left, let's, uh, let's do it. And you can see that it turns. So uh, just to go over the code uh, for a second. Um, yeah, let's, this is actually old. We don't need that. That's the code from the example, but I didn't like it. And the motor setup was completely different. But yeah, so we've, we've talked about this. Uh, we define our motor pins and we define our speed pins. Then here we set all of those pins to outputs. I did it in a for loop and that's why I didn't recognize it uh, for a second. This delay can actually definitely go. That's more if you want to wait for a serial connection. And then here we call these like helper methods, turn left and stop all. Um, so that's really what it is. Like you remember how we hooked it up? Motor pin one and motor pin three were uh, the left uh, motors and then motor pin two and four were the right motors. Uh, that's how we set it up. So uh, one, two, three, four is how the motors are set up. So everybody knows advanced is just all of the pins sent to high, give them the speed. Um, same with retreat, all the pins set them to low and give them the speed. So that's forwards and backwards. And turn left is as simple as putting motor one and three to low, so they turn backwards, and two and four to high, so they turn forwards, which will make it turn, and then the same for right, it will make a turn, and that's, you can see that represented in this code right here. Now, I think that's where I'm gonna stop for today. You, you've seen the mock-up, so like the next logical step will be to make this thing work again, which it, it really shouldn't be that difficult because the code is already there, I could actually I don't know, like, I kind of wanted to save it, but technically we should probably be able to do this. Um, on the other hand, now let's just save it for the next time and then, because uh, otherwise it will get chaotic. So let's stop it right here and then I uh, hope to see you next time.